Hello everybody, welcome back to the Ashen Stone channel. My name is Chris and today I'm going to show you how I'm painting my Oathmark Elf Infantry. Enough yapping, let's get into it. I start with a black undercoat. I've sprayed this on from a can because that's nice and easy. Vallejo steel is up first. This is painted onto all of the steel areas, funnily enough. Specifically the male hauberk, helmet and sword. No need to be neat yet. So I'm just slapping the paint on. I'll follow this with Vallejo US Grey, which I apply to the trousers. It's a nice neutral colour that I like to think of as soft grey wool. Army Painted Dark Tone is up next, and this I apply liberally over the areas of steel and trouser I just painted. Once dry, it's on with Vallejo Basic Skin Tone which I apply to the face. As a light colour over a black undercoat, it will take a couple of coats to get good coverage, and while I wait for the first to dry, I use Vallejo Sky Grey to paint the tunic visible under the mail, and the gloves. I make sure to paint the bottom of the tunic, and the area between the figure's legs, being careful not to hit the trousers that I just painted. This too requires a couple of coats to get a nice smooth finish, and I retouch the skin while I wait for the first to dry. Once the face is dry, Army Painter Flesh Wash is applied. This is a fairly light coat. I want subtle shading to represent fair elven skin, rather than deep craggy shadows like you might find on a dwarf. When the wash is dried, I use the skin tone on my palette to highlight the face. I focus on the nose, cheekbones, upper lip, chin and jaw, and this leaves shading around the eyes, under the cheekbones, and in the mouth and lower lip. Black comes next, which I use to paint the eyes, and give the hair a quick touch up. This is followed with white, which I use to highlight the tunic and gloves. I want the tunic and gloves to be 95% white, just leaving the sky grey in the recesses, like between the fingers and the folds in the cloth. I also leave the underside of the tunic sky grey. Being white, it does take a couple of coats to get a good solid colour. I also paint the whites of the eyes while I've got the appropriate colour out. Vallejo chocolate comes out, and I paint the model's boots. As usual, we don't need a solid coat of this colour, as any patchiness is just going to add to the mottled leather effect. And it will be highlighted with Vallejo flat earth, roughly applied and focusing on the areas that receive the most wear. As an elf, I don't want the leather to be super worn though, so it's straight to the Army Painter Strong Tone, which is slathered liberally over the boots to tie the browns together. Vallejo Prussian Blue is the next in line, and I use this to paint the Halberk trim. This is applied carefully to avoid getting any blue paint on the male or the white tunic, but I try to cover all of the raised edging detail including the sides and bottom. I also hit the collar and the little tabs along the shoulder. Next will be Vallejo Light Sea Blue. This is applied as a highlight to the trim. I put this on the main facing of the trim, leaving the darker Prussian blue along the edges and in the recesses. When that's done, Army Painter Blue Tone is used to add a little shading around the studs or rivets and ensure the split up the middle is well defined. You don't need much to do this, just a quick pass over the rivet is enough. To add a splash more colour, these are elves after all, Vallejo Turquoise is used to paint the belt, pouch and dagger sheath. I also paint the trim on the gloves. This is highlighted with Vallejo Blue Green, which is applied along the edges of the belt, pouch and dagger sheath, 
in much the same way I highlighted the leather, focusing on those areas that receive the most wear. And also along the top of the glove trim. The black comes back out, and I paint the dagger handle in sword grip. And I retouch the hair. These areas are highlighted with a quick touch of Vallejo Black Grey. And the hair is further highlighted with a bit of the US Grey still on my palette. Vallejo German Camouflage Beige World War II is used to paint the shield strap in the model's left hand. Vallejo Brass comes out next, and I apply two coats to the chest plate, spaulders and dagger fittings. I also put a little paint on the rivets or studs around the halberd trim. I decided that I don't like the black dagger handle, so I'll paint it turquoise to match the sheath. I often paint the dagger black, brown or red to add a touch of individuality to each of the miniatures. Army paint a soft tone is used to pick out the details on the brass. A light coat is applied to the chest plate and dagger guard to pick out those sculpted details. The model is given a spray of flat clear to get rid of any unwanted shininess and it really pulls everything together. We need to touch up the metals though but that is simple with the base we've already applied. The brass areas are hit with brass once more, avoiding the recesses we applied shading to and giving them an extra highlight by mixing some Vallejo silver with the brass. At about 30 to 70 silver to brass and picking out the highest points. The sword and helmet are given a coat of Vallejo steel, making sure to leave the shading around the guard and hand. And the mail is given a very light highlight just to pick out a few of the rings on the highest points. Don't forget to paint the belt buckle while you're here, or you'll have to come back while you are writing the script to fix that up. Finally, it's on to basing. Base as you like. I'll be using my grout mixture and some static grass. And then painting the rim black. I've made myself some custom shields for these guys, and because I'm a glutton for punishment, I decided to freehand them. Idiot. It's a bit beyond the scope of this video, but if you would like me to go into more detail, let me know in the comments below. Once the shield is done, it's glued to the straps using super glue, and the model is completed. Now I just have to finish the rest of the unit. So I hope that's been helpful to you, or given you some ideas. They are a lot more vibrant than the other Oathmark models I've done, but I reckon it works for the elves. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time. Cheers.